Hi everyone, my name's Daryl. So back in September of 2019, I was diagnosed with Guillain-Barre syndrome. Subsequently, about a year later, I was re-diagnosed with CIDP. And so, yeah, this is, this is kind of sort of my infusion video days. Um, I get infusions for my CIDP condition once every three weeks. And yeah, I just use this as an opportunity to go ahead and create some videos about the condition to try to help others. And so <laughs> that's why you see um, my little infusion pull right here because um, I don't have anything else better to do. So <laughs> I figured I might as well create a video. Like I said, I was diagnosed with Guillain-Barre because really my condition was more of an acute condition as opposed to a typical CIDP, which sometimes takes a little longer to develop. And now I have CIDP. I don't know if my acute GBS turned into CIDP or if I just had a variant acute CIDP um, as opposed to the classical CIDP. But nonetheless, I've read a lot over the last four years, I've researched a lot about these two conditions just to try to kind of figure it all out in my head. And so today what I'm gonna do is talk a little bit about some of the differences between the two conditions as well as some of the ways they're very much alike. And so that's what we're gonna do today. So let's go ahead and get started. So both the GBS and CIDP are autoimmune diseases. And basically what happens is your immune system gets confused and it starts attacking the peripheral nerves in your body. Typically it's the myelin sheath that gets attacked. Um, and the most common symptoms are basically you get some tingling kind of that start off in the feet. Uh, you might have some numbness. You might also have significant weakness and there might be some pain associated um, with the conditions. So one of the questions that I always get is, what caused your, your problem? What caused your disease? And so that's one of the things that kind of separates GBS from CIDP is with GBS, probably in 60 to 70% of the cases, it's caused by some sort of virus. Um, basically, your immune system senses that you have a virus and it starts attacking the virus and then it gets confused. And instead of attacking the virus, it starts attacking yourself. Um, so it can either be a virus or a vaccine. Um, where your immune system also kind of got ready to go and got ramped up and then it got confused. With the case of CIDP, there really is no known cause. And so, yeah, unfortunately, most people with CIDP, they really have no idea on what caused their problems. So one of the other big differences between the two conditions is how quickly the condition actually develops. So in the case of Guillain-Barre, it's more of a classical acute condition where it happens relatively quickly. Um, they actually kind of coin um, Guillain-Barre, they call it AIDP, which is acute uh, inflammatory demyelinating polyneuropathy. I think that's what it's called. After you get uh, some sort of virus and maybe you have a little bit of a fever, it often develops after that, maybe a couple weeks after that, um, and usually it spreads really quickly. So it starts off often in the feet where you'll feel some tingling, um, and then it starts to spread upwards throughout the body. And a lot of times this can happen in the course of one day, maybe three or four days, but typically it doesn't get any worse after four weeks. Usually it's a lot less than then. With um, CIDP, it's different in that usually you will continue to get worse after eight weeks. And so if you have these kind of symptoms and they continue to get worse after eight weeks, then that's more of a classic CIDP as opposed to Guillain-Barre. And so that's the big differences between the two. So I already talked about symptoms a little bit, um, but the symptoms between Guillain-Barre and CIDP are actually remarkably the same, which maybe isn't so remarkable given that they do basically the same thing. Your immune system attacks the peripheral nerves. The big difference between, I think, the, the two conditions though is with Guillain-Barre, and CIDP, it starts off in the feet and it rises upwards. With Guillain-Barre, it continues to spread upwards and it can actually go into the lungs, lungs and sometime um, up into the face, um, which is a little bit of a different condition. But if it makes its way into the lungs, the patient will not be able to breathe because he has no controls of the muscles in his lungs. And so then he's required to get basically put on a breathing tube in order to um, survive. With CIDP, it never 
usually spreads to the lungs. So usually it's localized to uh, the legs and the hands and the arms, and it won't ever spread to the lungs. And so that's another differentiator between the two conditions. So one of the difficulties doctors have is with the diagnosis. Um, because the symptoms between um, Guillain-Barre, GBS, and CIDP are so similar, it's kind of hard for doctors to determine what you actually have. Both conditions, you have weakness, you'll have tingling, um, you'll have lack of rec reflexes, and so if doctors are hitting your knees and are looking for reflexes, you often won't have any. Um, there's nerve conduction studies that can be done. Um, the results of the nerve conduction studies will be very similar between GBS and CIDP. Um, they also could do a spinal tap, and also that would uh, be very similar um, in regards to the high protein content that would show up for those uh, two conditions. And so it, it's difficult. The one thing is if you aren't treated with Guillain-Barre, um, it can spread, right? So it can spread into the lungs and it could be life-threatening. Whereas with CIDP, um, it isn't really life-threatening. The other difference is with CIDP, you will continue to get worse. So GBS, if it isn't caught early, uh, maybe you don't have that severe of a case of it um, that requires hospitalization. GBS will typically self-resolve within four weeks um, and then you'll start to get better. Whereas with CIDP, you will continue to get worse after eight weeks and get worse and worse and worse until you get to the point where you'll no longer be able to walk and possibly be wheelchair bound. And so it's a very difficult condition doctors are put in to try to differentiate between the two conditions. Um, my doctor put me on IVIG because he really couldn't tell and he didn't want um, me to have CIDP and continue to go downhill without continued treatment with IVIG. And so, yeah, I thank him so much for that because I would have got a lot worse. Let's talk about prognosis or the outcomes for the condition. With the GBS, it sort of depends on when you are initially diagnosed. So if you are diagnosed early and if you get treatment early, um, often that will stop the disease from progressing. And so your prognosis could be uh, better. Um, some people, for whatever reason, um, the GBS just spread so quickly within a day. Um, basically, they went from being normal to almost being paralyzed. And so it, with GBS, it kind of depends on really the extent of the damage um, to the nerves. And so if you get to the point where um, you're ventilated um, and you're under a breathing tube, it's probably going to be a very tough and long recovery. And the stats out there let, will say that 90 to 95% of patients recover fully from GBS. And for the most part, I mean, if you look at these forums, hardly anybody says that they fully recovered just because of the extent of damage that it does to your nerves. Um, it, it just takes a long time for you to recover. But there is recovery and most most people are able to do most of the things that you, they've they've have done before but i don't want to take paint a totally rosy picture that it's going to be just like you were before because unfortunately for most people after they've experienced gbs they will never be the same um with cidp very similar um in that the quicker that you can get treatment the better off you're going to be um, CIDP is more of a chronic condition, and you never get better on your own without treatment. And so if you don't get treatment early, and if it just keeps getting worse and worse and worse and worse, it's damaging the myelin, the myelin in your nerves, and it gets to the point where after that myelin is damaged, it actually damages the axon in your nerves. And so for my condition, um, and I still don't know exactly what it is because I tested positive for the antibodies for the AMEN variant with GBS, and now I've got CIDP, and, but I have axonal damage in both of my legs. So, yeah, um, whatever it is, um, if CIDP isn't treated early, um, you're going to have significant nerve damage that, um, and axonal damage, which is very difficult to recover from. We do get better. Um, we get put on the treatment plan. We are able to recover, but it's gonna, it's gonna take some time and you are gonna have to stay positive. You are going to have to um, 
really have belief in yourself that you can get better and things will get better eventually. Not totally, but things can get better. So I had this, this whole video planned and I was supposed to actually have my infusion yesterday, but <laughs> it turned out that um, yeah, after four pokes, um, I wasn't actually able to get my treatment. Um, they were gonna try to get you know, pretty much with the credo. Got very resistant veins. <laughs> very resistant. So they don't like being poked. They don't like it. They kind of they kind of hide like a little turtle in a shell. <laughs> I'm a turtle. That's really a turtle. My veins are turtles. Yeah. So yeah. So I was actually this was going to be the original content where I was going to talk about the differences between GBS and CIDP. Um, but if today would have turned out a little bit differently, so we had another nurse showing up today that was actually going to do my IV, and then the original nurse was just going to actually do my infusions. And so my record for the number of pokes it's taken me for to successfully get an IV uh, catheter in place is eight. And so I told them today, after the fifth, so we did four yesterday, and then we did one today, so we're at five. And so I said that, um, yeah, if we get to nine, what did I say? I said, well, I said number nine is going to be a record. So, <laughs> and so I said, if we get to number nine, instead of me doing a video on GBS versus CIDP, I'm going to do a video about um, whether or not I should get a port. <laughs> so, I don't want to... Well, you don't have to get a port. The port I would know. be for me. I know, but I don't want to know that you have a port. It's hidden. Permanently it's a... stuck in your body. It's underneath the skin. You don't even see it. It kind of freaks me out. Yep. So anyway, this is my wife, Nicole. <laughs> <laughs> And um, so we started the infusion a little bit late today um, because one, they were had, they had to reschedule and number two, they had to do an extra poke <laughs> today. So it took them a little bit longer. And um, yeah, so it was, um, it was interesting, but they got it on the second try. So it only took me six. So that's good. That's great. Okay. So the last thing I'm going to talk about is... Okay, I'm going to... You're going to go? I'm going to go. Okay. Thank you for joining us, Nicole. So I have made a lot of generalities when talking about these two conditions, um, both GBS and CIDP. Um, and after all of the research that I've done and listening to everybody's stories, stories on the Facebook groups, I can say one thing is that every case of GBS or CIDP, everybody's just a little bit different. Now, there are variants. And so b both with GBS and CIDP, there's like the classical case of the condition, but there's also variants. And so, for instance, for GBS, um, there's a condition called the AMAN variant, A-M-A-N. It stands for acute motor axonal neuropathy. And in this particular condition, it's the, the immune system, as opposed to attacking the myelin in the nerves, um, it actually attacks the axon as opposed to the myelin. And so that's actually what I tested positive for um, on my antibody studies. There is also another one called, I don't know how to pronounce it, but it's probably ASMAN, um, A-S-M-A-N, which is both sensory and uh, motor nerve, axonal nerve damaging. Um, finally, the, uh, there's another variant called Miller-Fisher syndrome, which really spares both the legs and the arms, but it primarily attacks the muscles in the face. Now, with CIDP, there are also different variants. So with a CIDP, um, which I'm not sure exactly if I had this, but there's the acute version of the CIDP. So as opposed to classical CIDP, it's a CIDP or acute CIDP. There's a CIDP that is, um, for the most part, it's motor only CIDP. So it only affects the motor nerves. There's a CIDP that is only sensory based. There's CIDP that's multifocal, meaning as opposed to affecting both the right side and the left side the same. It'll actually focus on one area. So for instance, maybe the right leg, the right arm, as opposed to all parts of the body. Yeah, and so they're really, even if you have the classical case of CIDP or GBS, because we are all so unique as individuals, the way that you feel about it and how it affects you and how you talk about what it feels like to your doctor is going to be different based on what somebody else says the condition feels like. And so even 
So we're all very unique individuals. We all have our unique personalities and unique ways of viewing the world. And we're all just a little bit different. And the same way that we are all different, all the ways that both GBS and CIDP are also different in how we experience them. So one thing I know for sure is after either GBS or CIDP, nobody's ever really the same. Now, I was kind of joking and maybe not joking before when you know, I said you're not better after this disease. If I would have never had gotten GBS or CIDP, I would have never had the opportunity of learning these new school skills with YouTube. I would have never had the opportunity of creating these videos for this particular audience. And I really love it. I love creating these videos. I love trying to help other people. It really gives me a, a sense of purpose that I don't know if I would have got just by tr trying to play golf. Um, this really is less self-serving and it's trying to help others. And it's really great. So if you learned something, um, please like this video and also consider subscribing to my channel. And I hope to see you again very soon. I've seen a lot of change, been through a lot of pain. Some things are not the same as they were a year ago. But all will be okay, I move on each and every day. The past is where it stays, way back a year.